Good morning, friends. Let us join together in homage and worship, a, a devotion to Our Lady. Mother made all holy, throned upon thy knee, evermore the almighty child and Lord we see. While with all thou gazest on the wondrous face, blessed among all women, Mary, full of grace. We bow in homage and adoration to thee, our Heavenly Mother, Queen of the Heavens, Star of the Sea, Guardian of Humanity. We greet thee and thy angel hosts, shedding beauty and blessing among men and in nature. May we serve thee in our fellow men. O Holy Lady, Mother of the world, Queen of love and compassion, with all our hearts we pour out our love and devotion at thy feet, and we offer ourselves as channels of thy wondrous tenderness, as agents of thy never ready help. We pray thee to use us in thy holy work that we may grow more like thee, our glorious Mother. O Holy Mother, Queen of our hearts, we dedicate our lives to thy service. Ave Maria, gratia plena. Angels and archangels now around the maid, where the world's creator upon her knees is laid where she worships o'er him, God and man in one, Son of highest heaven, Mary's royal Son. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
May the Lord purify me that I may worthily perform his service. In the strength of the Lord do I repel all evil from this his holy altar and sanctuary and from this house wherein we worship him. And I pray our Heavenly Father that he will send his holy angel to build for us a spiritual temple through which his strength and blessing may be poured forth upon his people through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, let us now lay the foundation of our temple. Christ is our foundation and our chief cornerstone. We are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Except the Lord build the house, their labor is but lost that build it. The foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Christ is our foundation and our chief cornerstone. O oh Lord, thou hast created man to be immortal, made him to be an image of thine own eternity. Yet often we forget the glory of our heritage and wander from the path which leads to righteousness. But thou, O oh Lord, hast made us for thyself, and our hearts are ever restless till they find their rest in thee. Look with the eyes of thy love upon our manifold imperfections, pardon all our shortcomings that we may be filled with the brightness of the everlasting light and become the unspotted mirror of thy power and the image of thy goodness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, bless, preserve, and sanctify you. The Lord in his loving kindness look down upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord absolve you from all of your sins and grant you the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With praise and with prayer shall our temple be built to God alone be the glory.
The Lord be with you and with my spirit. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the undivided unity, eternal, immortal, invisible, to whom be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our God, how excellent is thy name in all the world. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the undivided unity, eternal, immortal, invisible, to whom be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Glory be to God in the highest and on earth peace to men of good will. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee. We glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord Christ, alone born of the Father. O Lord God, indwelling light, Son of the Father, whose wisdom mightily and sweetly ordereth all things. Pour forth thy love. Thou whose strength upholdeth and sustaineth all creation, receive our prayer. Thou whose beauty shineth through the whole universe, unveil thy glory. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, who never failest to help and govern them whom thou dost bring up in thy steadfast joy and love, may we abide forever under the protection of thy good providence and be filled with perpetual reverence and love for thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who art the strength of them who put their trust in thee, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, we commend to thy fatherly goodness those who are afflicted in this pandemic in our midst. We pray thee to strengthen and bless those who minister to them through Christ our Lord. Amen. We praise thee, O Lord, for the example and assistance given to us by thy holy martyr, St. Alban, the patron of our church throughout the world. And we pray thee that under his protection, thy church may continually serve thee in all good works through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord Christ, who for her wondrous humility and purity hath exalted the Holy Lady Mary among the hosts of heaven, Grant that we, thy people, may so follow that her most noble example, that we may at the latter end be found worthy to serve thee, even as do thy holy angels, O thou who livest and reignest in glory forevermore. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, with all our hearts, we praise thee for the great glory of thy most holy archangel, St. Michael, and all thy glory, thy holy angels, we thank thee for their wonderful wisdom, their supreme strength, their radiant beauty. And as their resistless power is used always and utterly in thy service, 
So may we, following zealously their splendid example, devote ourselves wholly to the helping of our brethren, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Teach us, O Lord, to see thy life in all the peoples of thine earth, and so guide the nations into an understanding of thy laws, that peace and goodwill may reign upon men. The epistle is taken from the second chapter of the epistle of St. Paul the Apostle to the Philippians, beginning at the second verse. Fulfill ye my joy, be ye like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of heart let each esteem of another better than himself. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, counted it not a prize to be on equality with God, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being made in the likeness of men. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Here ended the epistle. Thanks. Thanks be to God. He that loveth wisdom loveth life, and they that seek her early shall be filled with joy. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me an understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall keep it with my whole heart. The path of the just is as a shining light, shining more and more unto the perfect day. Cleanse my heart and my lips, O God, who by the hand of thy seraph didst cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with the burning coal from thine altar. And in thy loving kindness so purify me that I may worthily proclaim thy holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and upon my lips that through my heart the love of God may shine forth and through my lips his power be made manifest. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. is taken from the 12th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 23rd verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. And Jesus said, 
The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Amen, amen, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. Praise, Praise be to thee, thee O Christ. Christ. Good morning, friends, and welcome to the online, online live streaming uh, worship celebration of the Holy Eucharist from the Church of Our Lady and All Angels, Ojai, California. I welcome today all those watching through YouTube. Um, we have people from literally around the world who are joining us and we we'll want to welcome and acknowledge them for all of our members uh, up in the San Francisco Bay Area in Richmond, California, uh, the folks out in Chicago, um, friends, relatives uh, in Michigan, and even around the world, our loved ones in India, South Africa, and Europe. We welcome you. We encourage you to tune in regularly. As we can see, this we are once again uh, not having public services within the church, but um, we are still holding forth and masses are being celebrated here and will continue to be until such time as our governor uh, feels that it is right for us to reopen to the public. You know, we live in a very difficult time. Uh, in the midst of this pandemic, if you will, and uh, it's full of uncertain, uncertainty and insecurity, and it engenders, I think, a certain degree and level of fear in a lot of folks. Um, we have the health challenges, uh, that come along with this uh, plague that's beset us, um, unknown, of unknown origin, and uh, at this point, uh, very little in the way of treatment. Um, the uncertainty, it, it's like a, an invisible enemy, one that we cannot see, and therefore it instills within us a certain level of fear. Uh, and until such time as there is a cure or a vaccine, uh, we are subject to uh, these kind, this kind of pressure. Um, there is also the stress that comes along with um, concomitant social unrest um, and uh, violence, the protests that we've all read about in the media. And... Uh, of course, the, the claims of police brutality, unfairness and economic downturn, massive unemployment, and uninsured status for many folks. All of these things go to uh, put pressure on us psychologically. And certainly it seems to be reason to be concerned, but one can easily fall into the state of despair. What John Bunyan, the 17th century Puritan writer, in his book, Pilgrim's Progress, 
called the slough of despond. In other words, the swamp of dis despair. Despondency is a reluctance or refusal to use our gifts and abilities in a positive way, which leads to a prosperous, generous, and abundant life. Bogged down in despair, the fearful person drifts into a morose attitude that does not consider anything worth doing. St. Thomas Aquinas identified this lack of trust, identified this as a lack of, lack of trust and reliance on the goodness of God. The despondent person wastes time, wastes his or her gifts, wastes his or her life, and worst of all, wastes God's grace, which is fully and freely available to all of us. So what is the what is what will counter this? What what is the answer? Well, this morning we're encouraged in our liturgy to consider the ideal of confidence. Confidence is that feeling or belief that one can rely upon something in firm trust. The state of feeling certain about the truth of something, the feeling of self-assurance arising from one's appreciation of one's own abilities and qualities. Now the etymology of this word, confidence, comes from the Greek word, con, which means with, and phide or phido, which means faith or trust. You know, self-confidence is a belief in oneself and the conviction that one has the ability to meet life's challenges and to succeed, and the will and the willingness to act accordingly. Projecting confidence helps people gain credibility, make a strong impression, deal with pressure, and tackle personal and professional challenges. It's also a very attractive rate. You know, when a person feels confidence and exudes confidence, he puts other people at ease because they begin to feel comfortable in the presence of that person who is confident. As Christians, as liberal Catholics, as initiates in the, in the mysteries of Christ, we've been born into the family of God. And St. Paul in the epistle 2 Timothy said, I know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Our confidence and our faith and trust is in God's grace, which transcends this temporary experience that we call life because it is transient, it is changing, always changing. We know in the grand scheme of creation, that creation is indeed moving forward. And we say in our act of faith every Sunday at this altar that we believe that perfect justice rules the world. Nothing happens except that it is a part of God's great plan. plan. Earlier in the same chapter to, to Timothy, in verse 7, Paul said, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean upon your own understanding. Psalms 112 says, Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are secure, 
They will have no fear. In the end, they will look in triumph upon their foes. And so this morning, my friends, we're all encouraged to trust not in the arm of flesh because the arm of flesh will fail us. Trust not in politicians who claim to show us what the answer is, but to trust in that divine spark that exists within the heart of each and every one and to act from that place. That's what we're challenged to do this morning, to engender this spirit of firm confidence. And now unto God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three persons in one God be ascribed as his most justly do. All might, majesty, power, and dominion now henceforth and forevermore. Amen. Let us continue our worship with the act of faith. We believe that God is love and power and truth and light, that perfect justice rules the world, that all his sons and daughters shall reach his feet However far they stray, we hold the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man. We know that we do serve him best when best we serve our brother man. So shall his blessing rest upon us and peace forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. We adore thee, O God, who art the source of all life and goodness. And with true and thankful hearts, we offer unto thee this token of thine own life, giving gifts upon us, bestowed upon us, thou who art the giver of all. According to immemorial custom, we now mix water with this wine, praying thee, O Lord, that we may evermore abide in Christ and he in us. We offer unto thee, O Lord, this chalice with joy and gladness. May the worship which we offer ascend before thy divine majesty as a sacrifice, pure and acceptable in thy sight, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
as incense rises before thee, O Lord, so let our prayer be set forth in thy sight. Let thy holy angels encompass thy people and breathe forth upon them the spirit of thy blessing. May the Lord enkindle within us the fire of his love and the flame of everlasting charity. Brethren, we have built a temple for the distribution of Christ's power. Now let us prepare a channel for its reception. To that end, pray ye that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice of our hands and sanctify our lives in his service. We lay before thee, O Lord, the before thee, O Lord, these thy creatures of bread and wine, linking them spiritually with ourselves, and praying thee to receive through them our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. For here we offer and present unto thee ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a holy and continual sacrifice unto thee. May our strength be spent in thy service and our love poured forth upon thy people, thou who livest forever and ever. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounding duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with thrones, dominations, princedoms, virtues, powers, with cherubim and seraphim, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O Lord, these, our oblations, have served as tokens and channels of our love and devotion toward thee. But now we pray thee to receive, to purify, and to hallow them as earthly channels of thy wondrous power. We desire to offer this holy sacrifice, especially for thy holy Catholic Church, for Donald Trump, the President of these United States, and all that are put in authority under him. For all our bishops, clergy, and faithful, for those here present, and for all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. especially poor.
and for those who are again about to enter this earthly life through the portal of birth, and likewise for their mothers-to-be, especially Likewise, do we offer it for all those thy children who have been delivered from the burden of the flesh, especially for that freed from earthly toil and care, they may, enjoy the per they may enjoy the felicity of thy presence, evermore praising thee in word and deed, O God, everlasting, living, and true. Wherefore, O Lord, Holy Lord and Father Almighty, we pray thee to look down on and accept as a channel these offerings, and with thy Holy Spirit and word to bless approve and ratify them that they may become for us the most precious body and blood of thy son who the day before he suffered took bread into his holy and venerable hands with his eyes lifted up to heaven unto thee God is almighty father giving thanks to thee he blessed break and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat ye all of this for this is my body In like manner, after he had supped, taking also this noble chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks unto thee, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink ye all of this, for this is my blood. As oft as ye shall do these things, you shall do them in remembrance of me. splendor thee, who in thy sacrament dost deign to be. We worship thee beneath this earthly veil, and here thy presence we devoutly hail. O come, O ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, monarch of the angels. O oh, come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet thee, throned on thine altar, ever to thee be highest glory given. Word of the Father, splendor everlasting. O oh, come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Amen. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants, bearing in mind the ineffable sacrifice of thy Son, 
do offer unto thee this, the most precious gift which thou hast bestowed upon us, in token of our love and of the perfect devotion and sacrifice of our minds and hearts to thee. And we pray that thou wouldst command thy holy angel to bear our oblation to thine altar on high, there to be offered by him who as the eternal high priest forever offers himself as the eternal sacrifice. And we do pray for thy servant of ministers at this altar that meekly celebrating the mysteries of the most holy body and blood of thy son, he may be filled with thy mighty power and blessing. Likewise, we pray thee to sanctify thy people here present for these thy heavenly gifts, and through these mysteries do thou hallow, quicken, and bless them, that both in their hearts and in their lives they may show forth thy praise and glorify thy holy name. All these things do we ask, O Father, in the name and through the mediation of thy most blessed Son. For we acknowledge and confess with our hearts and lips that by him were all things made, yea, all things both in heaven and earth. With him as the indwelling life do all things exist, and in him as the transcendent glory all things live and move and have their being. To whom with thee, O mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be ascribed all honor and glory throughout the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by the words of sacred scripture and following the tradition of Holy Church from of old, we now say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Here do we give unto thee, O Lord, most high praise and heartfelt thanks for the wonderful grace and virtue declared in the Holy Lady Mary, our Heavenly Mother, and in all thy glorious saints from the beginning of the world who have been the choice vessels of thy grace and a shining light unto many generations. And we join with them in worship before thy great white throne, whence flow all love, and light and blessing through all the worlds which thou hast made. O Son of, O Son of God, who showest thyself this day upon a thousand altars, and yet art one and indivisible, in token of thy great sacrifice, we break this thy body. Praying that by this action, ordained from of old, thy strength thy peace and thy blessing may be shed abroad upon thy world. And as thou, O Lord Christ, was made known to thy disciples in the breaking of bread, so may thy many children know themselves to be one in thee, even as thou art one with the Father. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. O thou, who in this adorable sacrament hath left us a living memorial and pledge of thy marvelous love for mankind, and dost therein graciously draw us into wondrous and mystic communion with thee, grant us so to receive the sacred mysteries of thy body and blood, that our souls may be lifted into the immensity of thy love, and that being filled with a high endeavor, we may ever be mindful of thine indwelling presence and breathe forth the fragrance of a holy life. Amen.
desire to partake of the body and blood of our Lord Christ, draw out and receive this most holy sacrament. the veil of earthly things, now have we communion with our Lord Jesus Christ. Soon with open face shall we behold him, and rejoicing in his glory be made like unto him. Then shall his true disciples be brought by him with exceeding joy before the presence of his Father's glory. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. We who have been refreshed with thy heavenly gifts to pray thee, O Lord, that thy grace may be so grafted inwardly in our hearts that it may continually be made manifest in our lives through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Oh,
The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Ite misai est. Deo gratis. The peace of God which passeth all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. May the Holy Ones whose pupils you aspire to become show you the light you seek, give you the strong aid of their compassion and their wisdom. There is a peace that passeth understanding. It abides in the hearts of those who live in the eternal. There is a power that maketh all things new. It lives and moves in those who know the self as one. May that peace brood over you, that power uplift you, till you stand where the one initiator is invoked, till you see his star shine forth. Amen. 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 Amen.